So I'm going to use this article from XDA as a talking point about some of the improvements that, well, I would like to see as well with the NVIDIA RTX 5000 series video cards. I will link to this article in the YouTube description down below. Make sure you head over here and check it out. It is an interesting read. Now with everything, and I do mean everything from top to bottom, becoming more and more expensive, I would also like to see better pricing on the 5000 series video cards. But I don't think, to be honest, that is going to happen. I think they will be more expensive. Some people are saying no, but I believe they will be. And uh, what will the prices be? Who knows? I am guessing, and this is just based on what I have seen and what I have seen is pure speculation, $2,500, maybe for the 5090, maybe the 5080 will be between 17 to 22 US. So if you're in Canada, you might be looking at probably $3,000 just for a 5090 video card. We will have to wait and see, I guess, when they release these video cards sometime next year. Sensible power requirements. Now, wouldn't that be lovely if it was the case, but I don't think so. Although, if you remember, as they mentioned in this article, the 1490, when it was rumored about power, it was said that it was going to be 800 watts, but it wasn't, of course. So who knows? You know, they're saying now that the 5090 is going to be around 600 watts. That's certainly a lot of power required for just one single video card. And it will have two 12-volt connectors, but... We'll have to wait and see on that. So isn't it time to move away from PCI Express 4 and go to PCI Express 5? I think so. And let's hope the 5000 series video cards from NVIDIA will support PCI Express 5 because that means a heck of a lot faster bandwidth and frequency than PCI Express 4. But I don't know of any concrete information that it's going to support PCI Express 5. However, we can cross our fingers and hope for the best on that. Now, if we were living in a perfect world, we would have proper tiers and naming schemes for pretty much everything, whether it be a video card, a motherboard, a CPU, but that's not the case, unfortunately. However, I have to say, over the last little while, NVIDIA has pretty much gone from the 2000 to the 3000 to the 4000, now to the 5000. So they really haven't changed much in the sense of, you know, going that route when it comes to numbers, you know, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. And some people call, you know, this series the 50 series, not the 5000 series. So, but, you know, it's kind of the same. It's strange though, in a way, because of course the 5000 series, the 4000 series is broken down into 4050, 4060, 4070, 4070 Ti, 4070 Ti Super, 4070 Ti Super overclocked. It's very confusing, of course, when you're looking for a product, it doesn't matter if it's a video card or some motherboard or whatever it is, it's just the same across the board. And it can take quite a while for you to figure out what's what. Now, VRAM is crucial in my opinion, especially if you are playing the latest games at higher resolutions with all the eye candy on. How much is enough to future-proof your purchase? I would say go with a video card that has at minimum 16 gigabytes of memory. Now, that might seem like a lot, but in two years, it won't. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please, if you have any input at all, and there are things that you would like to really see in the new 5000 series video cards that NVIDIA is releasing, let us know.